Sometimes last year, a friend of mine phoned me to complain bitterly that his Canadian study visa was rejected and I asked him to share his application process and application documents with me, which he did and I had a look and I discovered some of the errors he made and some of the probable reasons why his application was rejected and I gave him some tricks and tips and I asked him to put in the application while adding some of the information after discussing his background with me I discovered that there are so many things that could actually make the Canadian visa officer to reject his application so we modified the application and then he put in the application just a few weeks ago he phoned me to let me know that his study visa had been granted so the tips that I shared with him is what I'm doing this video about maybe it could help somebody else out there so ladies and gentlemen welcome back to my youtube channel if this is your first time my name is steven ojo and on this channel i give information as to immigration updates i give information about study visa work visa settlement and every other opportunities for foreigners abroad i give information that are very vital to my viewers so if these are important to you please kindly consider subscribing to my youtube channel below like comment and please hit the notification bell so that you can always be informed whenever we upload our videos There are several reasons why your Canadian study visa can be rejected. I'm going to be discussing one of them today and some of these reasons could range from the fact that you do not have a clear study plan like your statement of purpose does not align like the, the course you studied earlier with the one you're going to Canada to study they don't align so it could be several reasons it could be proof of fund that you having inadequate proof of fund can be a very good reason for your study visa to be rejected in Canada on this video I'm going to be talking about ties to your home country which is a very important aspect of Canadian study visa so what is ties to your home country and how do you successfully prove this in your Canadian visa application what is ties to your home country so basically ties to your home country is actually an aspect of your visa application that requires you to explain that you have reasons to return back to your country after your studies how do you let them know or show that you are going back to your country you show them that I have a life back in my country I have the things that I'm doing in my country that I would go back to your home ties could either be family, you letting the visa officer know that, oh, I have a lovely family back home, I have a wife I love and I have kids that I'll be going back to to continue my life with them. I have lived all my life with these people. I can't afford to leave them and immigrate to another country, you know. So I'm just going to improve myself and return back to them. You actually have to state this in your statement of purpose or a letter of explanation as the case may be explaining that you have a family ties you have a wife and they need you to be around you have children you have mother you have father if you're not married you can prove ties to family by stating that you have parents who are socially depending on you so while proving your home ties what i would advise that you don't do like i advise that my friend is that you do not state that your family are financially depending on you that you are the breadwinner this could be a good reason for i mean the visa officer could have a different thought about this it could be that oh because you have financial challenges you might not want to go back to your country so you don't have to tell them i'm not saying you should conceal it but you you don't have to there are some things you don't reveal in your visa application you have to reveal just enough to convince the visa officer to grant your application i remember some years ago when i first applied for canada visa application i remember stating in my statement of purpose that i'm a nigerian uh, lawyer that i was doing well that i had businesses that i was doing that i do not have any financial difficulty that will make me to emigrate to a, a different country and leave my family alone that i had a family who are looking up and wanting to see me depending on me socially you know you have to give those sweet words to convince whoever that is handling your case to decide on your case 
in your favor. Yes, another way of proving your home ties is by way of assets. So if you have assets, for instance, if you have landed property, you may wish to add the documentation to prove that you actually are worth in your country. So these are the things that can easily convince the visa officer that, oh, he has what can actually make him to return back to his country. How many people even have a landed property in Canada? He may want to return back to his country. So if you have landed property, you have a um, house or block of flat, whatever properties, you add them. And it could be vehicle, if you have cars, if you have, you know, whatever you're using to make money. If you have them, you can find documentation being maybe, if it is vehicle, you can find the receipt. If it is land, you can find documents of that land and add them to the application. You see, Canadian visa application actually succeed on grounds of documentation. They believe so much in documentation. Whatever you're doing, you have to find a way to I mean, look for document to prove it to them because they are, they don't do face-to-face -face, um, interviews. The question they already have in mind, they are not in front of you. So you have to envisage them by going to the website and read them up. Look for documentations to answer these questions. The success of Canadian visa application lies on sufficient and adequate proof of document. You need document to prove whatever you're doing. So... If you have documentation for the property you have in your country, you can use this to prove ties to your home country. So another one is if you have shares, these are the intangible ones. If you have shares in companies in your country, you know, if you have businesses that you run and if you have your own business, for instance, you, you have the document to show, then go ahead and add them. Don't leave anything to chance. Add the document, registered company, registered business name. You have to know that when you're adding any company name that you are a director of a company, you must be very sure that you are paying tax for those companies because they are actually going to verify. So if you're paying tax on your company, it's just for you to add your tax uh, documentation to prove to them that that company is actually viable, the company is valid and subsisting. So you have to add all of that um, documentation to prove your home ties whatever that you're doing um, in your home country that is worthwhile look for documents to prove them so this will convince the visa officer that you would return back to your country it doesn't necessarily have to even be tangible asset for instance if you're a community leader in your country if you are a youth leader whatever that you're doing that you know that is worthwhile you know you have to get documents to prove to them that yes, you were living a good life in your country and that you would return back to your country. So guys, when making your Canadian study visa application, don't take proof of home ties for granted. It's as important as proof of fund. Don't take it for granted. When you're writing your statement of purpose, make sure that you dedicate um, good paragraphs to address this area and be convincing enough and why convincing them you have to make references to the documents that you have added to the application to prove these home ties you can also prove uh, ties to home country by showing that you have a job that you're doing in your country so you are going to need a letter of introduction from um, the establishment that you work for that they are aware that you are traveling or you're leaving the country or go for study that they're just letting you out for you to go and acquire and broaden your horizon about a particular subject matter and that they are more than happy to you know have you back after at the completion of your studies this is what the letter of introduction should contain so you should be able to let them know that you act in a very very important capacity in that company whatever your designation in that company is you have to let them know that that role that you carry out in that company is very vital to the company and it's also very important to you that after your studies, you will definitely return to your role or even a higher, um, to act in a higher role or higher capacity as, as it were.